Hey there folks and welcome back. Today we're introducing a very important topic for our course, partial derivatives. This corresponds to section 14.3 from the text, so check it out for some more information. To motivate this topic, think back to Calculus 1. There, a major part of your course was derivatives, right? The idea behind a derivative was you had some single variable function, y equals f of x, and at a point x equals a, you wanted some way to measure how quickly the function is growing or shrinking as you move away from a. One way to measure this rate of change is to look at a nearby point, a plus h, and then measure the slope of this line passing through the two corresponding points on our graph. You see, the slope of this line is gonna give us the rise over the run. It tells us how much our function's value changed proportional to how far we moved along the x-axis. Now, the rise, the change in height, is given by this quantity here, f of a plus h minus f of a. And the run, the change in x value, is simply h, right? So the slope of this line is given by this quantity that you see here. Of course, we're not really interested in this second point. We want to know how quickly our function is changing at x equals a. So what do we do? Well, we let the distance between these points get smaller and smaller and smaller. As the distance h decreases, we are measuring the slopes of these lines shown in green. These slopes are approaching the slope of this pink line, the tangent line at x equals a. When we take the limit as h goes to zero, we get the slope of this tangent line, which we define to be the derivative of our function at x equals a. It's denoted by df over dx at a. It's the instantaneous rate of change at this point. Now, when you first learned this stuff, maybe you thought, who cares? Why would I ever want to know the slope of this tangent line? But now you're older and you're wiser and you're more experienced and you know that the slope of the tangent line tells you many important things about your function. The tangent line gives you a linear approximation to your function. It allows you to approximate points nearby using a straight line. Derivatives can also tell us where our function is increasing or decreasing and help us to locate local maxes and mins. It's a really, really useful object. So we want to make use of these same ideas in Calc 3. Our goal for today is to extend this notion of a derivative to functions of multiple variables. Okay, so suppose that we have some multivariable function z equals f of xy, which we've graphed over here, and we want to measure the rate of change of our function as we move away from this point, which maybe I'll call a, b. Here's a on the x-axis, b on the y-axis. Well, hold on a second. Back in Calc 1, we could only move left or right, so we only needed one slope to define our rate of change. Now we have infinitely many directions in which we can move, so shouldn't we have infinitely many different rates of change? Well, yeah, that's correct, and in fact we do. In particular, we have a rate of change as we move from this point in the direction parallel to the x-axis. We have a rate of change as we move this way along our curve. Similarly, we may have a different rate of change as we move from this point in this direction, the direction parallel to the y-axis. And of course, we have infinitely many other rates of change corresponding to the many, many other directions in which we can move from this point. Later in the course, when we talk about directional derivatives, we'll learn how to find these many, many different rates of change. But for now, I want to just focus on these two, the rate of change as we move in the x direction and the rate of change as we move in the y direction. So let's start with x. If we want to know the rate of change as we move in the direction parallel to the x-axis, we're really asking for the rate of change of our function along this red line. Now notice this red line is exactly the cross section that we get by setting y equal to b. We can get the equation of this cross section by literally plugging in b for the y value of our function. That leaves us with just one independent variable. z is f of x, that's our variable, comma b. That's a constant. So the red curve is really a function of just one variable. Now, but hold on a second. We have a definition for a rate of change or a derivative for a function of just one variable. Think back to the last slide. We're going to plug in a plus h minus what you get when you plug in x equals a, divide by h, and take the limit as h goes to zero. That's going to give you something that looks like this. 
This is our definition for the rate of change as we move in the x direction. But since this is just one of many rates of change that we can discuss, we call it a partial derivative. And we denote it by this curly derivative symbol. Now, some mathematicians will call this symbol del, some call it di, I just call it partial. I just say partial f over partial x evaluated at the point a, b. This gives us the instantaneous rate of change as we move from a, b in the x direction. It's the slope of the tangent line at a, b as we move parallel to the x axis. Now really, this isn't some grand new idea. As we discussed, this partial derivative in the x direction is really just the regular derivative that you know from Calc 1 of this function, g of x, which is f of x comma b, what you get by plugging in b for your y value. If you don't believe me, write down the Calc 1 definition of the derivative for g of x. I think you're going to get exactly this. Now folks, everything I've just told you about the derivative in the x direction applies equally well to the derivative in the y direction. Instead of plugging in y equals b to your function, you're going to plug in x equals a. That's going to give you the equation of this cross-section here. By then taking the usual derivative that you know from Calc 1, we get the slope of this tangent line in the y direction, which we denote by partial f over partial y evaluated at a, b, the partial derivative with respect to y. Now let's check out some examples. We've just introduced the notion of a partial derivative with respect to x or y. But how do you actually go about computing these things? Well, I guess you could use the limit definition presented on the previous slide, but just like in Calc 1, the limit definition of the derivative is pretty bulky and not very efficient. In Calc 1, you pretty quickly abandoned your limit definition of the derivative in favor of all your fancy derivative rules, right? Well, we're going to do something similar in Calc 3. Remember, a partial derivative is just a regular derivative, but you treat all the other variables like constants. And in practice, that's how we compute these things. So for our first example, consider this function. f of xy equals x cubed root y plus sine of pi y. We want to compute the partial derivatives with respect to x and y evaluated at the point 1, 1. So let's start with the partial with respect to x. We're going to differentiate this function with respect to x, treating y as a constant. When I differentiate my first term, I'm going to get 3x squared, and this root y is constant. I leave it alone, 3x squared root y. The derivative of my next term with respect to x is 0. The derivative of a constant, which is how we're thinking of this term, is 0. So my partial with respect to x is simply 3x squared root y, and at the point 1, 1, that gives me 3 times 1 squared times root 1, which is 3. We do the exact same thing with the partial derivative with respect to y. We take the derivative of this first term, pretending that x is a constant. So x cubed is left alone. The derivative of root y is 1 half y to the minus 1 half. Now I do the derivative of this next term. The derivative is not 0 now because we're differentiating with respect to y. But using the chain rule, I'm going to get pi cos of pi y. This means that at the point 1, 1, my partial derivative is given by, well, what happens when I plug in 1, 1? My first term becomes 1 half. My second term becomes pi cos of pi. That's 1 half minus pi. Now this discussion has all been about functions with just two variables. But it turns out that all of our definitions and techniques for working with partial derivatives can be easily extended to functions with n variables. So for example, consider this function, ln x times y squared minus y e to the z. What are the partial derivatives of this function with respect to x, y, and z? To compute the derivative with respect to x, we treat all other variables as constant. The derivative of my first term is 1 over x, and y squared is constant, we leave it alone. The derivative of the second term with respect to x is 0, so we have nothing left to write. For the partial derivative with respect to y, we treat x and z as constants. So the derivative of my first term is 2y times ln x. The ln x term is left alone. The derivative of my second term is, well, the derivative of y is 1, and e to the z is a constant, so it's left alone. I'm left with 
2y ln x minus e to the z. Finally, for my derivative with respect to z, I treat x and y as constants. The derivative of my first term is 0, and the derivative of my second term with respect to z is minus y e to the z.